In this final tutorial, we're going to learn how to best render tune and sketch lines in Flare for Maya. We will also render the AOVs and crypto mats to push the style further during compositing and even generate lines out of passes from other renderers. I'm Henriette from Artineering and we develop artist-driven tools for stylized rendering. Let's get started. In the previous tutorials, we learned how to optimize the generated tune and sketch lines by adjusting the thresholds for depth, normals and color data. Now the only thing left to do is render the lines and combine them with other passes in compositing. Let's get to it! I'm so excited! For the best tune and sketch lines quality, we need TAA and high render scales. To set this up, select the Flare Globals node by clicking on the globe icon in the Flare shelf and head to the quality section. TAA will render multiple samples of the image over time, reducing aliasing and increasing sub-pixel detail that would otherwise not be rendered. Depending on the number of samples, render times can increase to a few seconds per finished frame, but the benefits are usually worth it. Increasing the render scale will increase the resolution at which Flare renders, bringing in new details that is not rendered otherwise. This will increase the render time, image file size and amount of video RAM required, but will give the highest fidelity of lines. We normally keep this at 100% until we need the best rendering quality. Additionally, the best way to know exactly how your lines will look is by using the floating viewport, which can be found on the flare shelf. If we right click on the float icon, we can select custom float viewport and set the desired width and height resolution for the floating viewport. Once you're happy with the way the lines look at the desired resolution and with the right quality, it is time to render. To render AUVs, we use the flare sequence renderer, which can be opened through the sequence icon on the flare shelf. If you wish to learn about all options in the flare sequence renderer, make sure to check the links in the description below. Now we will only concentrate on the settings that matter most when rendering lines. In terms of AOVs, we're only interested in rendering cryptomats, normal step, velocity noise, tune lines, sketch lines and line AOVs. Make sure to also enable distortion control within the advanced options and toggle distortion for each target where TAA or any other distortions need to be applied. We can then set the quality to TAA, the desired resolution and render scale as needed and render out the sequence as EXRs to the specified directory. If you like the freedom of compositing lines, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel with a bell icon to be notified about future tutorials like this one. Let's open Nuke. We will be working with Nuke, but most of what we will be doing can also be applied to other compositing software as well. Within Nuke, we can read our image sequence and visualize each AOV with some additional notes. This way, we can see that the lines render normals and depth in the normal depth layer, velocity in the velocity noise layer, and within the cryptomats, lines contain the ID of the objects they were extracted from. This makes it possible to add additional filtering or grading to lines and mask out the objects together with their lines as well. Additionally, the tune lines are rendered in the tune lines layer with their corresponding alpha values and the sketch lines are rendered in the sketch lines layer also with the alpha values. This way you can take these lines and apply them on top of passes done with other renderers like this. This is so cool! Or you can use them together with cryptomats to only have ID masks from lines. Finally, the line AUVs contain the UVs from where the lines were extracted. This means that we can now generate lines from other renderers too. The red and green channels of the line AOVs layer contain the UVs from the tune line, whereas the blue and alpha channels contain the packed UVs of each sketch line respectively. These will need to be unpacked into red and green UV channels using this custom node, which we provide with the Flare Nuke downloads. With all the line UVs now available, we need to use the line coloration node, which is also available in the Flare Nuke downloads. To set it up, connect the rendered image as a source to the node, connect the line or sketch line UVs and the alpha channels of the respective lines. The output will contain the lines based on the new source image. 
The line coloration node will also have the same global color control as we had in Flare, but now based on the new source image, which can be rendered with any other renderer. Now that's next level! We learned how to get the best quality out of our rendered lines with TAA and high render scales and to use the floating viewport to see the results in the exact resolution. We then rendered all AUVs that contain the line data and visualized them directly in Nuke showing that lines rendered to normals, depth, velocity and crypto mats. We also learned that the two lines and sketch lines AUVs contain the respective lines and that with the help of line AUVs we can even generate flare lines from images made by other renderers. You made it! This concludes everything there is to learn about lines and flare for Maya, at least until we come up with some more line features. Until then, keep rocking those lines and let us know if you have any other questions in the comments below or on Discord. If you love what we're doing, make sure to purchase a commercial license or become our Patreon to use Flare without resolution limitations and have your name appear in this beautiful list of credits. There won't be another line tutorial, but make sure to check out our other tutorials to learn how to do other amazing things using Flare. That's it!